Welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over the procedure for connecting up a power meter and a gas meter to Home Assistant. So I've done a number of other videos on Home Assistant, and I'll put a link below to my Home Assistant playlist where you can find those videos. A specific one you're probably going to want to watch would be the MQTT video. Now this isn't necessarily for beginners, but if you're getting into this stuff, I encourage you to try it because that's how you learn. So I don't really want to exclude anyone, and I'll try to explain it the best I can. So this is not going to work with every power meter and every gas meter either, but you may be able to use this information to figure out how to get it to work with your system. So these are the hardware components I have here. I have a new Elect NESDR Mini software defined radio, and that came with a little mini antenna. You can also use the RTL SDR. I find this one to be a little bit simpler, and it works well for this. Next, I have a Raspberry Pi 02W. Now you can use any of the Raspberry Pis. I think that's a great option here. The Raspberry Pi 0W I think would be a good one also, and you really don't need much power. This also has a micro SD card in it. I have a 16 gig card, that's plenty big. And then you need a USB on the go adapter, which is this here, and that's to plug in the software defined radio. So I have power here, I have software defined radio plugged into the OTG port, and that's ready to go. So I am going to take this out, this is currently configured, and I'm going to use this other card, simply because I'm going to be starting over to set this up. So when I head over to the computer, I'm not going to be coming back to the hardware in the video. I'm going to configure this card, and I'm going to stick it in here, like so. And then I'm going to go place this within range of my power meter and my gas meter, and this should be within range of Wi-Fi. If those two criteria are met, this should work. And then that will plug in, and hopefully it will work. So I'll head over to the computer where we can image this card. Okay, so I'm over here at my Mac. I want to open up the Raspberry Pi Imager, so you can download that on the Raspberry Pi website. Now, I do have the latest version as of this recording. I want to go to Choose OS and choose Raspberry Pi OS Other. And I'm going to use one of the light versions. Let's look here. I think the 64-bit version might work with this card, but I'm going to stick to the 32-bit version. That'll work fine for this. I'll click Choose Storage. I'll insert the SD card. I'll choose it. Now, there's a little gear in the bottom right here. I'll click on it. And these are the advanced options. So I'm going to set the host name. I'll just call this Pi Power. I need to enable SSH. I need to set a username and password. So I just set the username for Pi. The password is Raspberry. You'll want to use a good username and password here. Next, I need to configure the LAN. So I'll enter in some Wi-Fi credentials here. Make sure you choose your Wi-Fi LAN country. I'm in the US, I'll choose it. I'll set my locale settings, time zone, keyboard layout. Make sure you set all of that. I'll hit save, and then I'll hit write. It's asking me if I want to continue, I'll say yes. I'll enter in my password on my computer, and it will image the card. Okay, that's finished, I'll hit continue. Since I told it to eject the card, I can just pull it out of my computer, and I'll go insert the SD card in the Raspberry Pi, and I'll plug it in. Okay, so that can take a few minutes to boot up. Now I do want to say that's in another room, close to my power meter and gas on the outside of the building, and I'll be doing the rest of the configuration over the network. So I'm doing this on a Mac. You can also do this on Windows or Linux. I need to open up a terminal. On Windows, you'd open up the command line. And now I can type ping space pipower.local. And I'll do this until I get a ping, and then I can know that the host is up. So it might take a few minutes as it's booting. Okay, it looks like the host is up. Now I want to SSH into the Raspberry Pi. I'll type SSH pi at pipower.local. It says, are you sure you want to continue? I'll say yes. I'll enter in my password. And now we're logged into the Pi. So now I want to update it. So I'll type sudo space app space update space ampersand ampersand space sudo space app space full dash upgrade. I'll hit enter. So this will upgrade all the packages on it. Even though it's new, it might still be a little bit out of date. And I will put a link below to some video notes where you can find these commands so you can copy and paste them in. It has some packages that need upgraded. I'll hit yes. Okay, that's finished. So now we need to install the RTL433 software. Now there are two ways to do that. One is you can use the package manager. The other method is to compile it. I'm going to be covering both methods and I'll talk about the reasons you might want to compile it. So to install, we'll type sudo space app space install space 
RTL-433. Now it has lots of other packages to install. I'll say I want to continue. Okay, that's installed. So now I want to use RTL-433 to listen for the radios and the power meter and the gas meter. So to do so, I'll type sudo space RTL underscore 433 space dash F space 912 M. So this is going to listen at 912 megahertz. I'll hit enter. Now I'm going to ask you for your password. So here we're getting data in. So each meter is going to have an ID, so you can see the ID here. So what you want to do is go read your meter and look for the kilowatt hour value. So if I went out to my meter right now, I would see this. Now you may see 20 different meters here. You want to find the one that's yours and record that ID. So the power meter reports quite a bit. The gas meter, not as often. Hopefully it will come up here in a minute. I'll just have to wait through it. Well, that could be a while. Let's continue on and hopefully it will show up in a bit. So, about compiling and using the package. With the power meter, this would work. For my gas meter, the version of RTL-433 that installs with the package shows the model name with a plus symbol in it. I think it's SCM+. Plus, and that plus symbol causes a problem with Home Assistant. The compiled version is updated, and instead of having a plus symbol, it just says PLUS. So let me go over compiling this. I'll hit Control c to stop this. I'll type sudo space app space remove space RTL-433. So I have some packages I need to install in order to compile this. So I'll type sudo apt install and I have the list of the packages here. I'll hit enter. I'll say I want to continue. Okay, that's finished. So now I want to download the RTL-433 package. So that's on GitHub, you can see that here. I'll clone that repository. So now I'll type cd space rtl underscore 443. I'll say mkdir build, then cd build, then cmake space period period. I'll hit enter. Then I'll type make. Okay, that's completed. Now I'll type sudo space make space install. Now I should be able to type sudo space rtl underscore 433. And it's up and running. So I'll get out of this directory. So we can type sudo space rtl underscore 433 space dash f space 912 m. And here we're getting readings again. And this is perfect. So one of the first things that came up was this SCM plus. And on the default package, this has a plus symbol. Now what I would recommend is try the package out first and see if it's an issue. That package may be updated with the latest version by the time you're watching this. So compiling may be unnecessary, but don't be intimidated by compiling it if it is what you need because it's not too difficult to do. So now we're gonna get into the fun stuff. We're collecting data from the meters. Now we want to send that to Home Assistant and we're going to do that using MQTT. So I'll paste in a line here and I'll go over it. So we're scanning 912 megahertz and then this dash F is going to output to MQTT. So we have a lowercase F for frequency, uppercase F for the output format. And we have a URL for the MQTT server. So it's MQTT colon slash slash. Then we have the IP address of our Home Assistant server. And then we have comma user equals and we have our MQTT username. So I just created a temporary account for this video. I'll be deleting it after this video is over, but you'll want to use your proper MQTT username and password. So past that we have comma events equals, and there is an S on the end of event if you are typing this out. Let me squish that a little bit so it's easier to read. And we have RTL underscore 433 underscore pi. Then we have bracket forward slash model bracket bracket forward slash ID bracket quote. So this is going to be your topic and I'm actually going to change this here to be pi power and I'll hit enter. So now we're collecting data. So now I'm going to use MQTT Explorer, which is also connected to Home Assistant. So we can check out the data we're collecting. So here in MQTT Explorer, we can see pi power here. I'll expand it. And here we see ERT SCM and we have SCM plus. So I think these are actually my meters. Yes, and this one is also. 
So again, you want to look at those IDs and check them on your meter. There will be a label printed on your meter that will have that same ID. So this data is now being fed into Home Assistant. So let's go back into the Raspberry Pi. Now let's say the Raspberry Pi gets shut off. You'll have to restart all of this. So let's hit Control C and let's set up a service. So I pasted in a command here, sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash systemd forward slash system forward slash rtl433 underscore two underscore mqtt dot service. I'll hit enter. Okay, so I pasted some things in here. So this is a pretty standard service. Let's look at the command here. So this is going to run the command and connect up to mqtt. I see there is a space after pass here. I don't think that's supposed to be there. But we have that same command. Let's change this back to Pi Power. And this is set up to restart after 10 seconds if it becomes unavailable. So this makes it a little more robust. So to save this, I'll type Control O, I'll hit Enter. And I'll type Control X to exit. Now I want to enable the service. So I'll type sudo systemctl enable rtl433 underscore two underscore mqtt. I'll hit enter. So it's enabled now. Next I'll start the service. Now we can look at the status. So I'll change start here to status. And we can see it's running. Let's go back into mqtt explorer. And here we can see it's running. So once you've confirmed this is working how you want it to work, we can lock it down. So I can type sudo space raspy dash config, I'll hit enter. I'll go to performance options. I'll go down to overlay file system. I'll choose yes. And this will set this up as a read only system. That way if it becomes unplugged or loses power, it's not going to corrupt it. Now if you ever do need to make changes, you'll need to go into this again and turn off the overlay file system. You can make your changes and then re-enable it. It says, would you like the boot partition to be write protected? I'll say yes. I'll go to finish, and now it's going to reboot. So this might take a few minutes, and then we'll go into Home Assistant and configure this. Okay, it's back up. I'm just going to log in real quick. We'll check the status, and it's running. So now we've converted that Raspberry Pi and that SDR into a little appliance to collect power data. Let's go back into MQTT Explorer and you'll want to go in here and you'll want to identify your devices. So I'll click on this here and I have already confirmed this is my power meter. So I'm going to open a little note here. And when this is selected, I want to copy the topic and I'll paste that over here to the side. And then I will go to my gas meter and I'll do the same. And I should be done with MQTT Explorer now. So let's go into Home Assistant. Now I already have this set up in Home Assistant, so I'll walk through how it gets set up. So you'll want to install the file editor add-on. You could also use the VS Code add-on, there might be some others. But I'll click on that. And then I'll click on configurations.yaml. So I created a new file called mqtt.yaml and I'm linking it from the configuration.yaml file with this line here. So to create a new file, you go up here to the top and hit new file. And that is the mqtt.yaml file here. So if we look at the mqtt.yaml file, you can see at the very top here, we have sensor colon, and we have these two entries here. Let's look at just the top two. Now these are set up similarly, but there are some differences. We have the name, so for the power meter, I have kilowatt hours, and then the state topic, is going to be that line you copied in. So here I have Pi Power, ETR, SCM, and then the ID. So you'd want to paste that in here. And then unit of measure, I have kilowatt hour, I have KWH, the W is capital. I don't know if that's case sensitive, but if you have trouble, make sure you have that case sensitive. I have force update true. Then we have value template. Let me get back into MQTT Explorer. Now, if we look over here in the JSON, you can see it says consumption data. That coincides with this consumption data here. So we have value JSON consumption data. So if your power meter or whatever device you're looking at has a different name, you want to make sure that is updated there. Then we have a unique ID. So that's kilowatt hour sensor, and that can be whatever you choose. We have device class energy. So you do want to use a device class. If you use certain device classes, it will store historical data. And then we have state class is total. So next we have gas. We have it as cubic feet for the state topic. I've used the other one here. And the problem I was talking about earlier, 
is if instead of saying plus here, it just said plus symbol, that was causing a problem. So unit of measure here is cubic feet. Now, now for the value template on this one, it's just consumption. Again, if we go into MQTT Explorer and click on this, we see consumption. We have the unique ID, we have the device class is gas and state class is total. So after you add this in here, you want to save it. Then you want to go on the left here to developer tools and we want to hit check configuration. So if you have any errors that will show up here, you need to resolve those and then we'll scroll down and you can see it says manually configured MQTT entities. You can tap on that and reload them and then you can use them on your dashboard. Now, if you don't have this, you could just restart the whole Home Assistant instance or you could hit restart here and reload the YAML. So I'll click on my dashboard here and I have these sensors so we can see the kilowatt hours and the cubic feet. And I've been running this for a while, so let me click on the gas one. And here we can see historical data. So this is going to show how much gas I've used cumulatively this month. And let's go into power. And here we can see the power over the past month. So that's how you can collect data from a power meter or a gas meter using a Raspberry Pi, a software defined radio and home assistant. Now this setup works with my power meter and my gas meter. Yours might be different. It might use a different technique to do this or it might not work at all. So if you want to play around with this, you can get a software defined radio and you can run RTL 433 software on Mac, probably on Windows and you can also run it on Linux. So you can play around with it in those systems and test to see if you can actually see the meters. And then once you've confirmed you can read it, then you could set it up on a Raspberry Pi. You could set it up on an older Raspberry Pi or you could get the Raspberry Pi Zero wireless model like I used in this video. And the same technique can also be used for reading weather stations and such. That would be on the frequency 433. But if you look at my Raspberry Pi playlist, I have a video using a Lilligo TTGO LoRa 32433 board to do just that. And using that board, it's a little bit cleaner setup than using a Raspberry Pi. Now the Lilligo board, they do make one that runs on the frequencies of the power meter, but I've not been able to get it to work with the power meter because it doesn't support the proper encoding. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.